Hello and welcome to Dependent Dropdowns with Filter. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. All right, here's the scenario. We would like to allow the user to make a selection of type from the choices available in this type column. All right. Based on the selection, then the user can pick the corresponding styles from here. Right. And depending on the type and the style, then they get to pick the size options from here and the color options from here. And then depending on these four selections, we want the um, system to retrieve the corresponding price. OK, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create the list of choices. We're then going to send that list of choices into the input cell, into the drop down, and then we're going to make a selection. And then we're going to basically repeat that, that process for each of these cells. So the first thing we want to do is create the list of choices for the type drop down. Now, the way that we'll do that is by grabbing a unique um, set of values from the type column. Right, so it's unique table type, uh, table one type. We hit enter, and this is going to give us a unique list of all of the choices found in this entire column. All right, now to get this list of choices into this cell, we're going to use data validation. So, data and data validation, and here we want to allow a list, and we want to set that equal to this cell B17 and then use the spill reference operator, that pound or hashtag. And this is going to say for the list of choices, start with B17 and grab any of the results from that formula. So we click OK. That creates the drop down. And now, as we can see, we have these choices. Now, for the first drop down, the choices don't change, right? Because it's the top or primary selection. So let's say we select T-shirt. And now for the style, we only want to allow the user to pick styles that relate to t-shirts, right? And not these others. So this is going to be our first dependent dropdown. So once again, we're going to create our list of choices. We're going to send those choices into the dropdown with data validation, and then we're going to pick a choice. So for style, once again, we're going to go with unique. And then we're going to use the filter function. And so we're going to say that we want to return a style. So we select the style column and then comma. And then we're going to set up a condition. The condition here is we only want to include those rows where the type column value is equal to the selection. Close the filter function, close the unique function and enter. And now for t-shirts, we get these four choices. If we change this to hoodie, we get these two choices. If we change it to sweatshirt, we get this one choice. So this list of choices is dynamic and it is working. And by the way, if we wanted to actually do these in um, alpha order, we can wrap the sort function around that. And that way our drop down will be in alphabetical order. And let's wrap the sort function around this as well and enter. OK. Um, so now we've created this list of choices this dynamic based on the selection up here. And so we need to get that into a drop down. Once again, we're going to go with data, data validation. Once again, we're going to allow a list. This list is going to be equal to the results uh, returned by this formula. And then we're going to use that pound or hash to tell Excel to retrieve all of the results returned. Click OK, make a selection, basic. Now we just basically rinse and repeat. We're going to create the list of choices for size. We're going to send those into the data validation dropdown and pick a choice. Now, equals. Let's go ahead and sort and unique. Once again, we're going to use filter. And this time, the filter function needs to consider two different dependencies or two conditions. So the first argument is we want to return a size value, comma, and now we have two conditions. So the way that we tell the filter function to handle multiple conditions is by stringing them together using either multiplication or addition operators. Multiplication would mean and. All of the conditions must be true. The addition operator means or. Any or either of the conditions can be true. So let's check it out. In parens, we do the first condition. 
So we want to return a size, but we only want to include those rows where the style is equal to the selected style. Close that function. Multiplication operator for and where, and then the next condition enclosed in parens. And where the type value is equal to our type. Close that function and close the filter function, close unique, close sort, and enter. We have two choices, which are M, medium, and small. And if we were to change this to something else, we get different choices and different choices. And this looks like it's working as well. So now we need to send this list of choices into the data validation dropdown. So once again, we're going to use data validation to allow a list. And the list is going to be equal to all of the values returned by this formula and click OK. Let's go ahead and make a selection. All right. And now for color. Once again, same basic idea here. We're going to sort a unique list returned by filter. Now we're going to have three conditions. So we want to return a value from the color column, comma, and then we string together the conditions. Only include those rows where the size uh, column value is equal to our size. Multiplication operator means and where the style column is equal to our style. Uh, multiplication and where the type is equal to our type. Close that, close filter, close unique, close sort, and enter. So these are the color options for this. And if we were to change this, we get different color options. So this looks like it's working. Once again, for data validation, we're going to allow a list. And it's going to be equal to this and this and OK. Now let's make a choice. And we got it. OK. Finally, price. Let's go ahead and grab this. We can do this with filter. Equals filter. We want to return a value from here, comma, and then we set up our conditions. We only want to include those rows where color is equal to the selected color and where size is equal to the selected size and where style is equal to style and where type is equal to type. Close that, close that, and enter, and we got it. And if this happens to return multiple rows and we wanted to aggregate these, no worries. We could just wrap a sum function around it. That would be fine. Um, or maybe we wanted to find the average or count or whatnot. So you can wrap whatever type of aggregate function around that result um, if it's returning multiple rows. In other words, if multiple rows meet all these conditions. So anyway, hey, that's how to use filter to create dependent dropdowns. Hope it helps. Thanks. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 